Let's dig deeper into IPv4. Uh, in IPv4, we have a 32-bit data decimal address. Uh, it's notated in data decimal, so that was what you saw before when we were referring to something like 192.168.1.1. Uh, you have eight bits separated by a dot. So each bit, uh, each set of eight bits is called an octet. So we have one octet, two octet, three octet, four octet. So eight times four, you have 32 bits. Each one is separated by dot to make it easiest, easier for us to read and interpret. Uh, so if we have an address like this, well, in reality, it's, it's eight bits separated by these dots. So what this looks like in reality is something like this. It'll look like, I'll need a lot of room for this. <laughs> it's going to be one, one, so it'll look like that so this is a decimal conversion of the actual binary ones and zeros that the computer knows. So this address, which is a very common address, you probably have it set up this way at home, is you know 192.168.1.1. It's a very common uh, RFC 1918 private address. When it's converted into decimal, it looks like this. So how does that work? Um, before we, and actually, you know what? Before we get into how it works. You remember how I was talking about subnet masks, and uh, you know it would look like something like this. It would be two five five, dot two five five, whoops, dot two five five, dot zero. So you know what does what does that mean? Notice notice this 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 division line right here. This which we'll talk about is the ending process. It'll match these parts of the address, uh, and we'll get into that and what that actually means, but. See how it divides at that uh, that one octet here. This this one division line is where it switches over from two five five to zero. Where it switches over from two five five to zero in this example, that's our defining line between our network and our hosts. And we'll get into this is the beginning of subnetting, which we'll get into later. But this is our division line. This is very common to see, especially on small networks. Quite often this will be your dividing line between your network name, your network number, and your host numbers. So get used to seeing that. That's very common. This is considered a slash 24, which we'll get into, because it's 24 bits, which we'll, we'll talk about. So remember how we talked about uh, this is a 32-bit number? 8, 16, 24, 32 bits, right? So we have four sets of eight, four octets. Remember how I said slash 24? 8, 16, 24. That's why it's called a slash 24. If we had one more bit being used for our subnet, then it would be slash 25 or something like that. We'll get into that. But that's how that notation comes in. Um, we'll talk a lot more about that coming up. But that dividing line at between two octets is very common. Sometimes you also see it here which will be a slash 16 because it's 8 16 bits on one side and then they'll have dot zero zero or something like that uh, so to see to see that at uh, between two octets is very common because it's easy for us as humans to to see that especially when you're dividing it into four chunks if one of those chunks is you know your dividing line then th that makes a lot of sense in our brains so that's what it looks like in binary here if we convert 192.168.1.1 into binary. So how does that work? So how that works is we're going to take 192 and turn it into binary. So what you do is you're probably going to have to do this quite a bit uh, over time. So get used to doing this kind of system. Each, each of these ones and zeros refer to a placeholder essentially. So the placeholders are this. And this is what I like to use this terminology. You might hear other people refer to it with different terms. But write them out across like this 128 64 32 16 8 4 2 and 1 
So there's our eight bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those eight bits reference what we see right here. And then again, it'll reference what we see here in the next octet, and the next octet, and the next octet. The ones mean they're turned on. So think of it as like an electrical signal on and electrical signal off. So this is on, and then this is off. So with this, we would be basically saying this is on, and this is on, and then all these are turned off. If we add them up, one to the, the placeholders, 128 and 64, we get 192. Starting to make sense? If we're trying to do 168, we would do the same thing. So 64 might be turned off, and then the others would be turned on to add up to 168. Same with, uh, as you saw here, as we uh, go down, you'll see we needed to make a 1. To make a 1, well, these had to be all turned off, and we had to turn this one on. So add all these up, they're all zeros. This one gets added up. His placeholder is 1, so it's just a 1. Simple as that. The, write down the placeholders, and you can convert from decimal, well, from binary to decimal by simply marking underneath which ones are turned on and then adding them up. Once you add it up, you'll get whatever number it's supposed to be. If it exceeds 255, you probably did something wrong. <laughs> because if all these numbers are turned on, you'll get 255. If you exceed it, go check your work. You, you, added, a, you added a place or something like that. Uh, also, you can go from decimal to binary. So this works kind of like uh, long division from grade school. Basically, we'll say 192 goes in. Does that go? Um, how many times does 128 go into 192? Okay, well, it goes in one time. Uh, what's left over? 64. How many times does 64 go into the remainder? 64. Oh, it goes in one time. Uh, do we have any remainder? It's zero. So we just write out the rest of the zeros. If you used a different number, like 168, you'd start out with 168. And you could say, how many times does 128 go into 168? Oh, yeah, it goes in one time. Uh, how many times does the remainder go into 64? Zero times. Um, you know, the next that remainder, how many times does 32 go into it? One time. Uh, and so on. And you basically just kind of do like a long division with these placeholders. That's really how you convert from decimal to binary and back again. Uh, there's other ways of doing it. There's tips and tricks methods of doing it out there with common numbers that you can look into, but that's the basic idea behind it is remember these placeholders, and they double each time, so it's not that it's not too difficult to remember. Just start at 1 and then double. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Once you hit 128, that's the end. You have 8 placeholders, 8 bits, and then you can do that for each octet. So you have 4 octets. You can just use those same placeholders and just do that, um, you know, subtraction and addition to determine, uh, you know, what the decimal notation is for a, a binary set or a binary set from a decimal notation, just simply with those placeholders. Um, usually when you take one of the exams with Pearson View or something like that, they'll give you a, uh, like a dry erase marker and like a little white sheet or something like that. Write down these placeholders, and it'll, like, right when you get in there, just go write these down, 128, 64, 32, so on. Put it on there, and, you know, it'll, it'll help you reference that when you need to start doing subnetting, which we'll get into, because we'll start doing this uh, at a more detailed level. We'll start working with these placeholders a lot more. But that's really how the IPv4 is, is broken up. Uh, V6 is a whole other animal. We're not going to get into that right now, but uh, remember that each of these is considered an octet, because there's eight bits, so octal, eight and you have four of them, and they're separated by dots, so it's dotted notation, and we convert them into decimal format, so it's easy for us humans to understand. So that's why it's a dotted decimal notation.